Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back in. We do apologize for the uh, quick swap out of myself and Monkey, but we're ready to go. We're straight into Bank, which is going to be Zalus's pick, I believe? Uh, no, that is Acme's Bank. Okay. Uh, Acme's pick. So with Acme now being a one point up, they're going on to their map choice, which is a little bit of a spooky moment for Zealous. Yep, definitely going to be fighting an uphill battle at the very least. So into the banning phase straight away. Is there anything that's going to pop out to you? Well, for now, the Rome Clear Wombo Combo being Jackal and Dokubi are off the board by both teams, which means that we might be seeing plenty of roaming from both of them in that regard. Now, I'm quite curious to see wh how will the um, the defense ban will go, because if they will be able to out plenty of info gathering, now that will hurt. Oh, well, there you go. There's one <laughs> big info gatherer right off. That's Valkyrie now being unable to be brought into that defensive side on bank, which we know is quite a very large map. I believe we were saying it's the largest map in the Rainbow Six competitive pool at the moment. Uh, that and Villa. There you go, two of them. So, one of. <laughs> one of, yeah. What is the biggest oddity is on bank, Smoke is the one banned. Mm -hmm. Now, that is going to hurt a lot yeah. to the defense, which is actually being played by Acme. So, really sure that's that's a shot to the foot by, the, by themselves, because they were the ones who banned Smoke. So they're denying that, uh, that, that basement, that, yeah, that the basement denial. play. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to have to work on the back of that. But it does allow Mirror to come in, so they will be picking Mirror up instead of Castle as the sixth pick. Now, obviously, coming straight off the back, it's Acme that are the, the map up, like Cthulhu was talking about before. And one other huge change, Cthulhu, that's going to possibly turn this whole map on its head. Yeah, well, yeah, just the general fact that smoke won't be there will be putting more emphasis on on echo and well on any more any other plans and hours, i.e. any any operators that wield the C4s or or yeah echo once again. And on the outside of uh, operators and even outside of the game, we've got two different players swapping in. Yes, yeah, that one as well. Pardon, I. <laughs> I, try, I tried to set you up for the home run hit, and we, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we we fuffled that. Yeah, it was a little bit of a kerfuffle, but yeah, we do have a two-player swap out, two subs coming in for the uh, for the side of Zealous, which be uh, which also would replace the two biggest players of Zealous at that point, being Striking and uh, um, JCZ. I haven't had the best chance to have a look at their setup because I was just quickly fixing the uh, the gorgeous stream for all you wonderful viewers at home. Uh, are we seeing much of a roam here, Cthulhu? Uh, we see a a little bit of that, but not a full on setup from uh, from Acme. It seems that they are expanding a little bit onto the ground floor, but apart from that, they're all going to be somewhat close by to any point to rotate as we do see a strider and hayward set up on the service stairs so that pulse is going to be quite a nuisance for the the poor attacking team and especially with playing on those service stairs will deny a lot of that control especially when that hatch when they finally decide to go for that hatch but for now right, but just as you mentioned that, actually, an Asgul will be getting the better of Stiggs, and that is at a very good time, because the moment you shut off uh, the Legion at a very early time, that's no more of the Goomines. So Hills at the moment. I was looking to play somewhat of contact on those main stairs, but backs away for now. Oh, slow and steady wins the race, as Strider's getting a lot of information on these players. Surely they will be able to at least set up for this. Yeah, hopefully they would be able to with the two-man advantage. Acme is seeming to be in need to stop falling back, but it seems that Hayward and Hills have a complete opposite plan for this. There we 
you go. Again, stride up, just receiving and distributing the information as needed. Of course, the mirror play directly in towards CC. Waiting for, of course, that play to come through. They go for the backward plant, but Haywood reads it incredibly well with the aggression to deny it. Will be dropped, however, from Hotshot, who does find the angle. And again, Pulse now knows where those last two, well, where two of the members are. Correct. Now the C4 will be coming out. Strata will be the one to be throwing in the C4. There it is, and we'll be able to catch Jam of God. That is a three versus two, and time is now starting to run low if Hills and Strata will play it very carefully, which they seeming to be able to. This could be the win, the big play as the the what happened? Oh, no. <laughs> It was a four. It was a five versus two. Matter of fact, and they managed to bring it back all the way to two nil <laughs> for the first round. And my goodness, Akame, just wow. Yep. First hills, then Strider. Both of them stepping up massively. You know that first deny from Hills to come through with the early frag. There was no need for that C four meeting. Strider could hold on to it for a moment longer and. You know, so much information was being gained on that pulse, just waiting on the inside of Vault. Now we do head to Tellers and Archives, but very nice. So I would say it's a really nice start for Acme already in this second map. Indeed, a fantastic turn of events for uh, for Acme to start things off. We'll definitely be keeping them on their momentum after map number one and uh, they will be going to Teller's office which is once again they're following the similar trend to what they've done on clubhouse which is be completely unpredictable on the the defense pick rather but but um as it stands for now they will still be expanding their defense onto Potentially second floor, which could net them a couple of very good uh, roaming kills if that would work that uh, work out for them, and uh, if Zealous won't be too careful about that. The hills will be backing down after taking a little bit of control up top with the remainder members. Stride up, who's happy to play, looks to be on that second floor with Hayward. And that's going to be Doc going out for the early peak. <laughs> no one there. So Dino, his position is given away for now. As he backs away to a safer position. Correct. And uh, it is also interesting to see uh, to find that Dino is playing with a Doc rather than for the sake of ACOG. But we did see plenty of times when Doc uh, players were uh, utilizing the... Oh, that's a nice smiley face. <laughs> um, they were utilizing their stim pistols to a quite a large extent. So it's definitely a powerful utility as just Jam decides to just behead Hayward with that nice swift spray. That is going to be Vigil off the board. Fortunately enough, not really the most impactful utility as a team, rather as the individual. So... That's okay for now. Sushi slowly starting to clear that top roam down. Doesn't look like they're really too hesitant in taking those fights either from the side of Acme. That's going to be Stiggs falling down. Dino does find a very quick trade. So in amongst the midst of battle, they do live Capital. A three versus four now as we do hit that minute 20 mark. Correct, as uh, for now, a whole lot of destruction is being made by Sushi. The stand-in for Zealous for this round is definitely seeming to be having still a, a pretty good knowledge about his whole role. As, uh, like we mentioned before, Zealous are running in, uh, in a pretty interesting setup with running a three-man flex, an entry, and a full-man support, which Hotshot, being part of one of the flex people, will be able to get a nice flex oh. for the AE players, but Dino... Gets traded out by Jam straight away. As now it is all up to Hills to try to deny the plan. With 45 seconds left to go, things might work out in his favor. If the Diffuser will be down right there, right now, as oh. this 2v1 situation. Potentially another one. 
Ooh. Goes in for the shots, but just can't connect with the with Su Sushi. Now it's all up to him on full health against Jam and Sushi, who is quite low on health with 23 seconds left to go. <gasps> Does he have the line to the plan? He will be able to find the first point of contact. Jam stuck the bomb, so Hills can't really do anything about that right now, but will be trying to isolate the 1v1s. It looks like they might be playing back-to-back -back for the support, so Hills is going to have to get past two separate players. Does he ooh, find the timing? The pre-fire just not going to work out, but it's the double setup to come in from Zealous. And that will secure them and net them that second round, which will be their first on the board for Bank. Indeed, a good start. A good start for Zealous to be able to net themselves their first round in the second round of the, of the map, albeit that it is their opponent's map pick. And uh, maybe we will be even following the trend of both teams trading the maps between each other and then a final showdown in um, map three. Maybe we'll, we'll be seeing that, but that's a little bit, maybe a little bit too early. <laughs> Might just be a little bit too early to be calling that out. Um, six pick? Hello? <laughs> yeah, six <laughs> spicy ones coming out. Nazgul deciding to go full on uh, frag power, aka Ash, and uh, Hills is bringing in a shield operator for the defense upstairs, which I'm uh, uh, not exactly a bit of a fan, but um, maybe I'm missing a couple of big brain players. I think we saw this from Acme last week with uh, Hills and it didn't pay off. Or maybe I was watching one of the Pro League games. I can't really remember. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I've been watching a game in the past week where we've seen the Clash being brought upstairs and it didn't really work to the, uh, the full potential. So maybe this is where it can start to turn and they can realistically use that shield play. But as you said, so there's two, two highly, uh, uh, two massive fragging powers on the side. Of, of course, Zalus, being Sophia and Ash. Interesting. Some dirty damage to be done, my friend. <laughs> Interesting indeed, as uh, Clash could prove to be quite a thorn in the side of the of the attack. But looking at this setup, oh. Hayward, <laughs> that is nasty, mate. That is absolutely disgusting. How? how thin that pixel line is has uh, put the definition of the pixel peak to a whole new level. It's coming out. Stride up will look to make contact closely to the window, but backs away, thinks better of it for a second. That might have just saved his life as Sledge is already holding on to it. And just being that point of bob up, that stride are opening up onto Sushi, who doesn't really have any one to support with the refrag so sledge is now well and truly out of the server no. correct meanwhile strider is playing a very aggressive angle at that opened up window and ceo office where he does expect some long angle to come out but it doesn't seem like there might be one just yet they are aware that there is jam i believe who is holding that angle just from a slightly different perspective Strider now firmly at the back of CEO. Starting to make their way back in, but Flash can hold for a small moment longer. Lobby now being taken control of as Long Desk is now broken into. Oh, nicely done from Dino from underneath with that pulse play. The C4 destroying Jam and his opportunities. Oh, six! Only just missing, but it does bait out Sim. And that's really poor because now the bomb out in the open with four defenders remaining. It's not looking good, and that looks to be the round done and dusted. Nicely done from Acme. Well, it's definitely as Nazgul is just struggling a little bit to find any shots. And yeah, like you said, it is done and dusted. A fantastic execution from AE at the end of the at the end of the round, just managing to bring this all the way for themselves as the the round and the plant is dead. So we do head back to lockers and CCTV where it took a clutch from Strider to realistically pull that one out. 
And that smoke ban has, and I would dare say will be quite a hindrance when we do head down there as it's generally a, you'd say it's a default pick as you do have the angle straight into CCTV from lockers. But that's all right because, you know, the mozzie play seemed to work. This time they're not going to be rocking the mirror, however, which will maybe change the style of play. Yeah, well, Mira did manage yeah, to shape the playstyle quite substantially, but it's also the fact how aggressive AE managed to play, because now, um, surely Zealous will be quite knowledgeable that, yes, they are playing, are, they are very aggressive. We need to be very cautious about that. Mm -hmm. And they will be needing to watch those angles when they're going to be running in, especially that table run-in where we saw, I believe that was... Um, Diggs, I believe, who was playing on, um, on Ella. I'm not 200, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, th they need to be very cautious about those runouts, as those were a gigantic pain in the backside. Well, let's wait and see how they actually decide to play this. Obviously, Pulse was the information gatherer in the previous, getting the early intel that there were three across in server waiting to collapse on that a bomb site this time i would dare say they will be stepping with caution zealous as they won't want to be giving away a four versus two again correct and uh, we do also see the uh setup that was quite popular within the previous pro league season where you pretty much fortify and give a fair chunk of utility to the server stairs and proceed to hold them for as long as possible and uh, having strider as well as uh, somebody with a shotgun say it would be quite beneficial, but it seems that will be just Strider playing there as Sushi will be able to get to uh, do some quick work off Dino very swiftly. Oh yeah, no, that's not the start that Acme were looking for. That ain't it, fam. And now with five players still on the board, realistically only a quarter of HP taken away from any player, the pressure will be reapplied like sunscreen for Acme. They need to be careful at this point, but Thermite's going to make small and light work of that hatch. Strider's actually quite aggressive as he's now being caught out in server, but no one's been able to capitalize. They haven't been able to push it just yet. He backs away, and now tripling down on that site. They're going to have to hold this in a similar fashion to what we saw before. Correct, and uh, that was actually a very well executed uh... Offense, by the way, because they didn't decide to first dump all the utility to try to clear out the service stairs. They just went in for the breach and then pretty much ensured that Strider, if they if he decided to hold his angle, um, he just will be forced to push out. So there's that Thermite coming through. Not Thermite, so well, actually Thermite to come through, but... That's the Thatcher to ensure nothing's there. Does Stiggs find the timing on the C4? Is he going to be able to deny it in time? Yes, he will. And now maybe a similar fashion as there's still three players. Haywood takes down Hot Shot, and the information coming through from Pulse is absolutely crucial right now. If Jam can push down and deny that information play and also deny Stiggs the free peek, he might just be able to make this work. But for now... They've got to play with a little bit of caution. It's going to be Maestro that's just sitting back and being an absolute nuisance. They don't have Thatcher anymore, and Haywood will shut them down with Stiggs on the side. And once again, they make it work with a two-man disadvantage. Correct. Like, like you said, it was quite a big disadvantage, and it definitely felt like a repetition of the story as well with the, their previous... Um, CCTV defense, where they were at what, a three-man disadvantage, mm -hmm. and managed to push it all the way to the end to win for themselves. So, with now a three-to-one scoreline, things definitely shaping up quite heavily in favor of AE. So she is going to be six pick for uh, two. Anyway. Echo. Back into uh, Towers and Archives. So Twitch is going to be brought as well. Interesting. Yes. So Twitch, uh, bringing over Twitch is probably the response to uh, from Zealous onto Acme's 
quite frequent pick of Maestro, mm -hmm. as uh, potentially uh, they were also expecting the, an upstairs, the CEO office, to be picked, but this time it's once again at Tellers. And uh, once again, it could potentially bite um, Zealous quite severely uh, up their buttocks. <laughs> Just waiting for him. I tried to find a, a bit yeah. more of a PG <laughs> word, but um, I was I was waiting waiting for how you were going to end that one. <laughs> That's all right. So looks as though Strider might be playing on Rome for a moment. But this is this is something we've seen from Acme in the past two rounds. Is that kind of uh, that not really working as much as what they would possibly have wanted it to? They would. Just going to be giving away his position, so whether they stay on the roam or not, that's their decision. Yeah, well, for now, the stock will be also just completely glued out, so there will be full on uh, notification as to where will be the positioning of the um, of the attackers if they do prompt to go for the push. And uh, oh, this could this could be interesting. They managed to play it out, but for now, so much rotation, so much roaming power could be coming out from Acme very, very soon. Oh, that was nearly perfectly timed. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay off. Sushi was just waiting for the, uh, or rather the C4 was waiting for Sushi to step over the top of the goon line, but not to be this time. So now CEO being breached for an attacking side as they start to take a lot of control of that top floor. I would dare say start to make their way across, sweeping the entire set. Correct, and just as you say that, Sushi will be getting the first kill of the round onto Stiggs once again, but Dino is running onto the entry fragger of Zealous, will be getting the better of him just like that, in a, just with about a half a round left to go. It is a four on four. Minute 15 left on that clock. As Dermite Serome starts to clear down the staircase. Hallway taken control of by Thatcher with the support of Sushi. So now they can start to look at a bit more of a centered attack. Sophia already dropped. That's now going to be the one of the Echo Drones down. And oh, Nazgul just going to be missing that shot. Again, Whiskers in there. Doc can't find the shots with the P90. Has to back away for a moment, but it's about to get hot and heavy over the Ward Archives. Indeed it will. Hayward is going in for the uh, for the flank. He might be able to deny that complete push if he manages to time push it eloquently, but does seem to have the good spot. He is hiding in the in the elevator as Dino takes the, another himself. That is on Serum Sushi is going down to the hands of Hills as Hodge does manage to finally spot Hayward. He does need to find three more kills in a matter of 14 seconds if he does want to let him, uh, his team the win, but it seems that Dino won't be having any of that mess. Right now, with round number six coming into effect, four to one is the scoreline of the first half, and things are not looking all swell whatsoever. Executive Lounge and CEO Office will be the next choice for the last defense for Acme, and uh, seems that we might be seeing a somewhat similar setup to what we saw on the previous Executive Lounge defense. Minus the fact that Hills is now will be the one to six pick off Clash onto Mirror. Well, hello, I'm back. Oh yeah, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All good. So, um, so what have I missed, Cthulhu? Fill me in. I apologize. Well, four to one is the scoreline, Monkey. Yeah. Zealous had a, initially a decent start at round two where they managed to take the uh, better of a quite competently. Nine, uh, uh, nine kills is the highest kill count so far for Dino, whereas on the side of Zealous, things didn't go anywhere higher than four kills. 
So things are not looking all swell at all for Zealous, and uh, with two subs now in uh, that are replacing JC and striking, their fragging potential has gone down quite substantially. Yeah, especially with JC off the board, we saw what a monster he was on that first map, didn't we? So, oh yeah, without, without him, it's going to be rather difficult. Indeed, and the only time when uh, Zealous did manage to get the epic win was actually on Teller's office, which we just saw have themselves getting demolished by AE as Nazgul tries to go oh. in for the pick, but the UMP just decides to outblast the R4C and just like that. Dino, the mad lad himself, will be able to net himself the first kill quite quickly. Yes, obviously they're going to want to keep that pulse down below. He's uh, obviously the denial through the floor with the C4 and his heartbeat scanner. Which I think might be, you know, step one for Zealous here. That's who they want to deny, who they want to get rid of. But, you know, we're, we're pretty much expecting Acme to sort this one out with two subs for Zealous, aren't we, Cthulhu? It definitely feels way more in favor of Acme rather than Zealous, even considering the fact that I did say that Zealous were, kind of, were technically considered on paper a better team Ooh. than Acme. This definitely Ooh. doesn't seem like it, as Dino is just completely just flexing on the opposition. See, you say that, but I honestly think that Acme might be slightly better. Yeah, um, uh, well, in this case scenario, yeah, this is, I would definitely oh. agree with you. Nice but shot there by Serum. Looking. But things are not going great here for Zealous. It is just Serum and Hotshot. Oh, that's one outside, but he's going to get back in. Hotshot, in fact, is going to find Haywood with his Claymore there. Where was that? Was that at the bottom of the tunnel, was it? Yeah, that was. That would be at the bottom of the tunnel. But nonetheless, still a three versus two, and we saw plenty of times when, um, when Acme were at a huge man disadvantage, they were able to still bring it back. So this is still Acme's round for the taking. And with the, still a minute left to go, Zealous can have a little bit of a luxury of having a... Um, Somewhat slow-paced push, but uh, with the things now creeping up, this could end quite badly. Yeah, 45 seconds on the clock. You're going to see some pressure from Banana, but, you know, uh, Zealous here have to be really worried about their flanks. Looks like Stiggs might be able to time this just right while we've got Strider baiting. He's got an impact in hand. If that hits the Thermite, he's going down, but no, Strider will go down to hot shot. But here comes Stiggs on the flank. He has dropped Serum. Has to fuse up. So now Hotshot has to do it all. 20 seconds to go as well. He knows they're both on the flank far away. Or does he? Well, one way or another, Stiggs will be the one to claim that double kill at the end. And uh, very well done. Defense by Acme, ha having only dropped a single round throughout that. And... Uh, we are going on to the side switch, so only two points away from the series points for Acme and uh, two points away from that sweet, sweet revenge. Well, to be fair, it is uh, you know, a defense, and then, of course, we, we always talk a lot about how defense is heavily sided on a lot of these maps, especially Bank. Bank is very heavily defender-sided. Correct. Now, with the I zealous... believe that was an auto pick for Nazgul, and he has to switch off of that one. He cannot stick the uh, warden. Yeah, I don't think he will be allowed. <laughs> Indeed, as uh, yeah, he will be bringing over a legion, whereas Hayward is bringing in the gridlock, an operator which we saw a little bit of a bit of a fifty-fifty success rate for a certain point. Am Ooh, I look at those right kills, Dino. Yeah, look eleven. at that Dino's. Yeah, eleven. That is nice. Yeah, definitely very nice. Um, but as as for the, you know, Gridlock, I, I'm really not a fan just yet. Like, I haven't seen her u utility used to great effect at all. Um, you know, it, it feels like a poor man's Nomad almost. Like, um, you know, <laughs> Nomad shuts down flanks, well, Gridlock's meant to as well. But I think Nomad's a lot more effective. Um, and, you know, the uh, track stingers can be countered so easily by the defenders. True, but wouldn't it be rather... Forcing defenders to kind of reveal their position when they try, whilst they're trying to get rid of those track stingers. Yeah, that, that's true. But you know, you can do the same with the claymore. You can do the same with the the air jab. Like you walk into true. an air jab and you're getting launched. I'm sure people know about that. 
I like I'm pretty Nazgul's... sure a whole lot of people experience that as well. First half. I like where Nazgul was for that peak, right? Like a lot of people will run along that little um, I suppose balcony oh. part. Oh. There we go. Oh, and he's looked away at just the wrong time, yeah, and he's not going to be able to land that. Well, he still manages to damage up Strider down to 50 health, so that will be forcing AE to be a bit more cautious and a bit more careful about how they're going to approach this. As for Nazgul, though, he does manage to just bail out very quickly and very swiftly. Yeah, well, Nazgul is surely feeling the pressure. He's very worried about a peak from above, of course. Yep. And just like that, there is that peak as well, like, just as you said it. A good read by Hills. Uh, look at Stiggs. He's going to be entering all the way from the garage. The rest of uh, Acme are trying to force their way into Skylight Stairs, of course. Pretty stock standard spot to take it from. They have to be worried about this soft wall, the right side wall. It's like yeah. Strider's snaking his way forward. Is he Hills is taking this wide peak. They're very aware of the player and janitor there. In fact, it looks like he's taken quite a lot of damage. Indeed, as uh, meanwhile, Hotshot will be claiming the head and the body of um, Hayward, not before Dino will be able to trade out Sushi. So it is the three, well, make it two versus Ooh. four, the two versus three, as Hotshot continues to blast things off and trading Dino out. But as the trades are continuing to come Ooh. in, Strider will be get, getting the better of it, and Hills claiming Jam as uh, Acme taking yet another one for themselves. Yeah, great round there from uh, Acme, and you know, Cthulhu, I, I hate to say it, but I think this might be all over Red Rover. <laughs> it certainly seems like it, and interestingly enough, throughout this whole map, not a single... Wait, actually, pardon. No, there was there was a plan down. I messed up a little bit in the, the log that I had, but um, yeah, there was one plan throughout this whole map, which uh, was done by Zealous, and... Yeah, just things went, things so far are going so well for Acme, it's actually amazing. Yeah, well, of course, um, you know, I was talking to, uh, who was I speaking with? I think it was uh, Strider, so striking mm. about about their lineup and uh, who exactly, I was speaking with Nazgul, sorry, I was speaking with Nazgul, and he was saying that, you know, Hot Shot, they, they plan on bringing him into play quite a lot, so, mm. uh, you know, I think he's just one for the future, really. Could be, could be. Considering the fact that we are nearing the uh, end of Pro League, the uh, the infamous ANZ shuffle is also coming up very soon, so potentially we might be seeing quite some changes, including the Zealous roster maybe even. But with, that, uh, with the theorizing out of the way, this may be potentially the last round for both of those teams as... Uh, Acme are seeming not too keen on backing out anytime soon. Yeah, well, action phase of potentially the last round. Looks like we're going to see the top floor attempt once again for Zealous. Um, you know, let's put some faith on them, shall we, Cthulhu? <laughs> I definitely would love to, Monkey. As uh, Zealous did prove a fair few times that they can pull it out, even out, out of the most impossible oh. situations. Oh, oh, there it is. There's nice. the one tap onto Dino. So that is a potentially very good start for Nazgul and for the team of Zealous. But as it stands for now, they still need to emphasize and get rid of the other four. Yeah, nice shot coming out from Dino with his uh, patented winky, winky face. <laughs> Gotta love that. Yeah. Such a such a Dino thing, isn't it? But it is the man advantage over to Zealous, so there is a good chance that they uh, might be able to stay in this one. Pretty sure I saw a stat. It was like 76% win rate when you get the first pick in a round. Ooh. However things do not always end up like that Cthulhu <laughs> indeed oh, for now Stiggs decides to go for a very ballsy push but will get shut down swiftly by Sushi so it's like that Hills will be also gone out by Jams and uh, the offense of Acme is uh, very 
very slowly but surely falling apart. It is up to Strider and Hayward. Strider was an absolute clutch meister back at Clubhouse, so maybe we'll be seeing a couple of very nutty shots Ooh. very soon. As there we go, that's the first nice one on shot. the Nazgul. Could well, be falling 2v5. Up. I believe they've already had one today, Kefilla, uh, in this match series. I'm yes. see another one. Well, very soon. The attack will need to start going for the push, so Ooh. she claims another one for himself onto Hayward. It is all up to Strider, who will be taken out by Jam with a swift C4. Zealous will be staying for at the very least. One more round, as um, that was a very well held defense. I gotta say. Yeah, that, that was very great by Zealous, of course. That was springboarded by the Nazgul early uh, one tap onto Dino. <laughs> And um, well, we saw last map, Dino was the one going absolutely ham, wasn't he? Or was oh, sorry, this map he's been putting up lots of numbers, hasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. He was he was able to pull out some great plays all in all. It's just as uh, we are going to tell us archives, well, we'll be seeing Nazgul six pick off Kayed. On to maybe... Oh yeah, this will be abandoned. I was just about to say Echo, but uh, no, this will be abandoned. So a bit more of a aggression potentially we'll be seeing from Zealous. Interesting to see that Zealous are completely avoiding going downstairs, Cthulhu. It is actually a very good point, yes. Uh, well, ever since Smoke did get banned out for this map, he is uh, a cornerstone for pretty much every defense and... Uh, he is definitely going to be a shot to the foot if Zealous will prompt to go for the downstairs defense. But looking at the scoreline also, do you want to point out yeah. Dino, like you said. Absolutely fantastic. slaying, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Slaying Double his nearest time. teammate. Yes. Yeah. So you look at it like that, it's almost like a 6v5. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't have any more Rio, says Nazgul. What am I doing? Oh, boy. Yeah, surely the rest face. of uh, surely the the rest of Zealous will have enough reinforcements to be able to finish it up. But oh, Sushi's up here. The serum's using his in the staff room. Could this be their attempt to kind of go for late prep to avoid having two stuns? Maybe. I think it's just uh, one of those bomb sites that takes a long time to set up. Like, look at all those rotate holes uh, Serum's put on, especially with that. Mirror shotgun, it's not, not the greatest. True, true. That is a fair point as well. But surely Acme try and start from this top floor. Yes, let's make our way in. Stiggs. Oh. Has he seen him? Oh. I don't think he did actually. Did see, he did hear the goo mine get put out. Looks like there might be one below him as well coming from uh, the service stairs. Not too sure just yet. I, I think there's uh, he's a bit more cautious about the presence in the kitchen actually. Rather uh -huh. than. Oh, oh no, wait, there, there is one on surface stairs, yeah. Yep. You are right. That could be the big oh. brain play if they manage to pull it off. I think they've seen him as well on that drone. I'm not exactly sure where he's ended up. Nazgul. There we go, he's going to be found by Dino finally through the hatch. Is that through two hatches or just the one? Just one, I think. Yeah. About 120 on the clock. And advantage in Acme's favor, of course. Indeed. <clears throat> Stigs, meanwhile, will be attempting to make some work from above as he does have plenty of holes to work with as Dino will be the next one to get the another kill for himself. Jam will be off the board and that is the German duo off the cards. Yeah, there's another one to fall. 2v5 Cthulhu. This is not looking great at all for Zealous. I think we might be looking at GG here. 1v5, all up to hot shot now. 1v4 in fact, sorry. He did find Dino. Taking one third of his HP as he is feeling a bit claustrophobic here on site. And there's Hills to finish things off. Acme with a 2 0 7 5 7 2 Cthulhu. Good stuff.
Good stuff indeed. As uh, a fantastic turn of events for Acme, the revenge has been served quite swiftly, and uh, yeah, Dino got to be the MVP with his uh, smiley face. Yeah, without a doubt. 15 kills he reached in the end, a 